that's creepy. <laughs> vete, vete, Grinchy. <laughs> you know, for the for the spoops. For the spoops. For the spoops. It is it is spoop spoop week. It is spoop week. I guess when this comes out, it'll be post spoop. But post post spoop week. Yep. 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 Because I'm tight. Thank you. You're welcome. Get it out of the way now. Yeah, yeah. All those, all those big that. yawns. I know. <laughs> it always happens when I'm <laughs> podcasting. Yeah. Oh, so many yawns in these nice, comfortable chairs. We're just cozy. We got the got the crackling warmth of a nice candle. A nice chandel. Chandalians. <laughs> What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host here with me today is my brother Jay who will be in every episode. I'm here Ben and let me tell you, I, I don't know about you, but I am personally still riding the high from the Washington Commanders game <laughs> last night. <laughs> Dude, it's I mean, I know I know that there's a there's an element of podcasting where whenever you deep dive sports a little bit, you can you can isolate members of the audience. However, ben. I think anybody, I in, including my three year old daughter, seem to fully comprehend it the is. magnitude of the ending of this game. This wasn't just like, uh, look, if you're if you're this deep into the pop, you just already know that we're commanders fans. And thank you for indulging us. Um, I feel like. I feel like it's less about being a fan and more like just talking about the nature of being a sports fan. No, I agree with you. Point. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, it, it's like we're, what we're trying to explain is the way in which sports impact us. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And let me just tell you that since 1988, the year of my birth, the commanders have been so bad. <laughs> they really <laughs> have. Just, just rare flashes in the pan here and there whatever but this season has just been a, d- a true delight to watch and last night was not just a moment in commander's history it was like the the pinnacle moment of the entire NFL season thus far and the commanders happened to be the beneficiaries of it and it was i mean it was a moment in sports it felt like it really you know? was it really was yeah i mean it's it's been uh, it's been so, so interesting to watch the season unfold. And I think we've talked about it a little bit before where we're like, there's, there's kind of that feeling of like, I don't know what to do with my hands. I know. Like, I know. It's like they're, <laughs> it's like they're playing good on both sides. They're winning in the commanding fashion. Like this doesn't happen with this team. It like just doesn't. all I'm used to watching is total nail biters tripping at the finish line penalties, mm-hmm. like, you know, turnover, like, you know, any, any version of just like, like, the other team not beating them, them beating them. Exactly. You know, it's just, it's always just sort of like shooting oneself in the foot it, along the way. That is what it has often felt like. And last night was gearing up to be a commander's game of old. Yes. Where they had led the entire game. They were were like they had scored on more drives, but just on field goals. And then the Bears were there was like 20 five seconds left yes i think and the or less i don't know like 30 seconds left the bears score a touchdown and get get the lead they even get the two-point conversion which means that if the commanders get the ball back and somehow get into field goal range and somehow get the field goal in which will already be tremendously difficult that it's just going to go to overtime the game won't even be over yet right and that's sort of what you're staring down the barrel of like i guess that's the goal but uh, then the kickoff happens. They get the ball back. There's like 30 seconds. They have time to run like two plays. They complete both of the passes and they make it down the field, but not into field goal range. So now you're in that terrible zone of like, well, it's hail Mary time, which if you're unfamiliar with that phrase, it's just where you have the quarterback. You're really far away from the end zone, but the quarterback just lobs the ball up as hard as they can in the air and 
hopefully someone on your team comes down with the ball. Yeah. So while, while we're watching on the couch, me, Allie and Addie, she's like, Alice is just like, what, what can they even do in this situation? And you're, you're just watching the quarterback, like run around, getting prepared to just heave the ball. Yeah. And while the ball's in the air, I'm like that, that, that's like, that's pretty much all they can do is just throw like this man can throw the ball as far as he can, as far as he can. That's it. And then you pray, which is why it's called a hail Mary. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I mean, like Jaden Daniels, our rookie superstar quarterback is back there scrambling around. He looks like maybe he's going to get hit, finds some space, takes like three enormous steps into the throw and just heaves it down the field. Yes. And you see this. That's what anytime you watch a Hail Mary. I mean, it favors the defense because all they got to do is just punch the ball anywhere anywhere they don't have to catch it they just need to make sure someone else doesn't right and the ball is going to be in the air so long they can all converge on it so there's so many hands up there it's very very difficult to like make a catch at all but there are there are certain things you can kind of do to improve your to improve your odds like having um one person stand behind the pile one person stand in front hopefully the ball pops up and maybe they can catch it and make a move or something right and sure enough that's what the commanders do they have someone just standing behind the pile one of the bears gets a hands on it it tips up and it just falls directly into his hands standing alone in the end zone and oh my gosh i mean i thought the stadium was going to explode same here like Like, I, i think the guy who caught the ball didn't even really like know in the moment like when you like watch the replay it's like it doesn't even seem like he knew like what happened like it's like it's almost like he was like standing there holding like a pot of gold looking around waiting for someone to take it from him. i know i was like where's the flag where's like the rogue holding penalty back at the 50 yard line where's the something because you're right he looked at it it looked like he almost just caught it at a reflex and then was like Oh my God, did I just catch the Hail Mary? What? Yes, you know? it's, it's like he couldn't, his brain wasn't even in a position to be prepared to celebrate the way that you're supposed to celebrate by th- this thing happening because it was so unlikely. It was, it was so unlikely. And uh, I was reading about it afterwards. And apparently, since ESPN has been tracking Hail Mary touchdown catches, okay, uh, which I guess they started doing that in 2006, there have only been six of them in the NFL since that time where a Hail Mary has successfully won the game. Wow. And this this would have been the sixth one. Jeez. I know. So it's like it very rarely happens. And like it, to, to watch it live and for it to be your team and in this like everything happened in the last 30 seconds craziness. It was just like you, you just, I mean, it was awesome. It was awesome. It really yeah. it really, really was. Um, Yeah, I mean, just just very amazing. And then I feel like there were uh, like all these other like tiny little strands that were also out there where like, um, you know, that basically you got the like the Bears, you know, on the one hand and the commanders on the other, both of whom drafted the the two top quarterbacks out of college coming into this NFL season. So yes. it's like it's like the battle of the star rookies and yes. the Bears had pick number one and they've got this guy and the commanders had pick number two and they've got this guy. And at present, like going into the game, I think that the Bears are their record is four and three and the commanders is five and two. So even like the if the commanders lost, what you would end up having is both of these teams, both of these remarkable players being in a position of being five and three. Yeah. And it's it's like on some level, it's like it's so it's so strange, but like being six and two for the commanders, like being five and three is like exactly what I expected them to do. Right. It's like there's such a head of steam, but like being this many games into the season, it just seems like the time for them to like drop the ball. It You know, I, it did seem exactly like that because it was so gearing up to be like a game of the past where you're like you're winning the whole time and you lose in the final 20 seconds. And you're right. like, gosh, but it, like it like. Like every you're right. Every game this season, you've been sort of like, when is that going to happen? Like this surely isn't real. Like this is just like a like this is the flash in the pan or something. And it was like, look, here we are. Now we're back to normal. But no, they like flipped the script. And it was like now now they're actually like have a like a, a solid like like you're right. Like five and three would have been one thing. But six and two. That feels like a much more impressive number that like, oh, it was like you just, oh my gosh, it just felt so real. Yes. And so, uh, so exciting. It's like, oh, oh, I just, I don't know. It's been such a unique experience as a, as a fan, like watching this team, because like 
like for a long time, you and I also both like watched the Patriots and like Tom Brady and we like always rooted for them as well. Yeah. So we've gotten to see like, you know, the we've gotten to see teams that we have some stake in win. Yeah. Um, And that's been exciting and it's been fun, but it's always been like, that's like the number two team. You know, it's like you like the Patriots and like they're they're good. And they won a lot and it was fun to watch them win, but it was never, it was never the same as if Washington was good. I know. You know? Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and that's, that's the thing. Like it's, it's very, it's like, I always wonder what this must be like, you know, for anybody who's a fan of somebody who always wins, you know, like whether it's like cheering for Michael Phelps or Alabama or, you know, like the, like the Lakers or the Yankees, you know, it's like teams that are used to being, on top right you know it's like there there is something about it where it's like you you there's nothing more satisfying in the world of sports than getting to watch your like sort of your team be the cinderella story and sort of like overcome all of the odds against all odds versus like the satisfaction associated with just getting to watch a team that is notoriously good continue to be notoriously good. Right. Like it's, it's almost more like you go into the game and like you have every expectation of your team winning. And this is, this is defying those odds right now, which has just been um, a lot of fun, but it's, it might actually be like a neat little segue for me here into a, a conversation topic that I had locked and loaded for today, because I think a big piece of what's going on with the commanders is that it's like, I don't even think that I have truly permitted, Committed myself to like want them to be good because it seemed so otherwise unattainable. Yeah. Like, you know, so it's, it's kind of like I'm having this, this small, like almost like, am I bandwagoning right now? Like, am I just like being enthusiastic about it because like, they happen to be good? And it's like, no, like, I mean, I've, I've been there. I've watched these games. Like, you know, me and you, like when we live together would sit on our couch and scream at the TV and, you know, yes. do the whole thing. It's like, you know, this has been like a lifetime, you know, of, I, of waiting for I, this to happen. I know what you mean though. You're like, am I like, do I, you like feel like a fair weather fan? And he's like, you're so excited all of a sudden. And it's like, like, oh, were, were you always this excited? And it's like, well, there just wasn't anything to be excited about. But it's like, it, yes, I exactly. wanted there to be. I've been there. Right. You know? <laughs> like, and it's like, oh, everyone's a fan now because Jaden Daniels there. And it's like, no, but I've, I have actually been there. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the whole time. <laughs> um, but I think I think that sentiment of like not even not even being able to permit yourself to want it because you didn't even know it was possible. Like this, I think, is kind of a it's an interesting concept because one of the, like we we did a, a pop q a which is something that we do every other month for our patrons um and basically people are able to submit questions and, and you and i spend an hour on live stream answering those questions and like almost without fail we will end up getting a question from somebody who is asking something along the lines of like hey i'm like you know in college or i'm in like my early 20s or i'm at this like sort of um you know uh, decisive area of my life and i don't really know like what i want to be doing and i don't really have like a particular like direction or like ambition or goal or something that like is way out there on the end like what what do you do yeah and i think so often whenever i've heard that question i have like related to it so ridiculously hard like i remember being asked all the time you know going through like my high school years and stuff it's like oh what do you want to be when you grow up and it was just like i literally do not know like, yeah, I don't have an answer to this question. And I know. And it was like, but you'd get asked it all the time. And I remember that same feeling of being like, I just like, I don't, I don't really know. Right. Like, I don't know what I want to do, like in college or whatever. And like, it, it would make you, it would like, it would make you feel like kind of like anxious and nervous. Like, oh, I'm, I'm supposed to have figured this out yes. or something like I, I should, shouldn't I know by now? And it's like, but you know, in, in many ways, it's like it's difficult to know because, you know, when you're a teenager, like your opportunity to experience so many different kinds of fields is pretty limited. It, it is know? pretty limited. And and you're also surrounded, you know, it's like, uh, say for an example or a situation where you happen to be like a standout in a particular subject in your class. It's like you're all around people who have had similar amounts of education to you. You all kind of dread homework the same way like you know it's it's like you don't necessarily feel like any of the skills that you're learning during this period of time are necessarily defining your strengths 
like or or maybe they should have been in a way or or maybe that's something like you know to be aware of as parents as we go forward is is attempting to you know spotlight those things but i but it's also not like i ever felt like those things weren't being done for me it just i still just didn't necessarily know where to direct my efforts right and and so for the longest time i've always had um a, like you know we we talk sometimes about like our good buddy john from the gma who like you know it seemed like basically from day one he knew he wanted to be like an architect someday and like his whole you know like he would do like summer projects and camps and competitions and like everything about like his life outside of school also seemed to like revolve around this thing and now he's a very successful architect yeah yeah you know, i mean like, that that was like their whole family way of existing Yes, you know, like his his dad was an architect, and he has um, two older siblings, and they're both architects, and yes. you know, all of them were always like very good at like art and math, which are you know basically the skills you need. Yes, <laughs> or two of the main ones. But but yeah. and, and correct me if you would disagree with the sentiment, but I also have never got the feeling like I know the, like the way you just described it, you can sort of get that like are you just walking to the beat of like the family drum? But like I have never gotten that sentiment at all like they all seem to have genuine interest in this particular oh absolutely they feel it never yeah. felt like oh they're expected to do this or anything right they all just like um did it and right all three of them are really good at it yes yeah. yeah and so anyway i think i think what what sort of like came up for me was um alice was talking to one of her friends over the weekend and they had stumbled across this like you know thread that was sort of like an interesting way to like hack uh, not hack, but just probably use chat GBT maybe in a, a rather functional or intentional way. Um, but it was it was taking sort of like that question of like, what's your five year plan or what do you hope life to be like 10 years from now or whatever? And I think her and her friend were talking about it because I, I turned 35 over the weekend and, you know, Alice asked me the question. She's like, you know, what do you want to do in the next 35 years of life, which came with some rather shocking realizations, which not the least of which is the fact that 35 years from now, I will have a 38 year old daughter, No, oh, weird. Um, which is like, yeah, it means it means 35 years from now, I will have a daughter who is older than I currently am, oh, which is wow. like, yeah, it's like that's very bendy uh, to, to look at. But I've, I've personally always struggled with this question, even into adulthood, even into like uh, the, this stage of our you know careers where we're at, where like, you know, I feel like we're you know, we, we've kind of found what we're doing. We're continuing to do it. Like it's, you know, it's working yeah. and, and all that. But sometimes like when you think about like, what's that next like ambition, like what's that next like big goal? What's the next like huge reach that you want to go for? I, I don't know like what is even possible. I don't know that the commanders are capable of being good. So like, I don't know what to like aspire for because I don't even know like what's on the table or what's available. Right. And, and so sometimes for me, I feel like what happens is it's almost like, I don't even know I can covet something until the door has been like unlocked. And then all of a sudden it's like, once you can open the door, you're like, Oh, okay. Like now, now, now that I see it's possible, I do really want that, but I couldn't have known that I really wanted that before I even knew it was attainable. Right. And so I think like this is sort of like a double edged sword because I think on the one hand, I'm not like distracted by not being at some type of end goal conclusion that I'm like aspiring towards. So like on that front, I remember uh, when I first graduated from college and I was trying to get like my life going and, you know, I'm doing like all this aquarium stuff and all that. Like I, I do remember being like, I want to make like a reasonable salary. You know, like yeah. I want to be able to like be at the point where I have like, you know, standard health benefits and like a retirement plan and like, you know, feeling like I'm able to go and like explore the world with resources that like I've earned of my own accord. And that took longer than I thought it would to happen. You sure. know, like I think especially like those like first few years out of college, it was kind of like. Oh man, there is not a ton of money in uh, commercial aquarium installation in <laughs> Roanoke, Virginia, right. as, as yeah. it turns out. Um, you know, so I think that that was like a, that was something I was actively preoccupied with in the moment. Um, but then, you know, like now, uh, like on the flip side, um, it's like I, I feel like uh, I'm not distracted by it the way that I was then, but I'm also, I don't feel like I'm pursuing some far flung goal off in the distance right you know it's Other like than like just you know b be able to retire someday yeah exactly right, yeah. yeah yeah um and and so it's like it's odd because it feels kind of like you know like early 20s a little bit like 
all over again as you're in sort of like the heat of career mode you know like like if i were to say like i aspire to be like a hollywood actor you know it's like it's like it's not to say that the next like 15 years of my life don't include some type of bizarro path where i find myself in in that capacity right but it's not like you're like waking up every morning thinking to yourself like okay what next step am i taking towards being a hollywood actor exactly right exactly and it's like it because it it, yeah i mean this is the commander's example it's like it feels so unattainable for them to be good it feels so unattainable for me to become a hollywood actor that like I, i can't deep in my core i can't want that because it feels so like it feels so way out there but it doesn't mean that like if those doors got unlocked i wouldn't be like holy crap i'm here right you know it's not that i wouldn't seize that opportunity the moment it became available to me it just doesn't it doesn't even feel like it's on the spectrum right i know know? exactly what you mean i mean even on like an extremely smaller scale like you know we were talking earlier this year about like getting a hot tub you know yeah yeah for like the long you know when i was a kid it was like well sure like people have hot tubs but like people don't have hot tubs just just like, just like wealthies right yeah like it's not it's not like it's a, it's a thing you could make like think about wanting but it's not a thing anyone like could conceivably do right you know? right like yes. it didn't like you know it, it was like i can't even let myself like want something like that because like how would i how is it even possible you know and it's like it's like you know i i am sure that you know, if I, it's not, I, and not, it's like, it is possible, you know? Right. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, if I, if I was trying my absolute darndest, I could probably have one at my house by the end of the week. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Yes. This. Um, not, not that I'm trying that hard at the moment, but you know, I, I took steps this year, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so that's something. Yeah. And, I know what you mean. Like, um, yeah, but you're right. Even like small scale things sometimes feel like I didn't even know that was like a thing I could accomplish or that was like like because historically it has been the sort of thing that's like it felt so out of reach as to like why even bother right like you know yeah and you know and for the longest time i think this is kind of interesting because it'll it might tie into my next point as well but like um i remember in like the early like again like my early 20s i remember like you know seeing some like friends from high school or college you know that were going on vacations like to the caribbean or cancun or you know like to to europe or something like that like some some type of form of travel that involved a plane ride and yeah. usually for me, the cost of the plane ticket is the entirety of the budget that I would have had for like leisure, recreational vacation time. Right. And so like when I would see people doing that, it was the type of thing where it was like, I'm not even jealous that you're in the Caribbean right now because it's like I can't go like, right. you know, it's like that's, you know, the the fact that you would still need to then pay for food and lodging and, you know, transportation from the airport to the to the place itself it's like clean over my head yeah um and but what what i think has been kind of interesting for me this year is that like we've we've done like the tours and stuff and part of what i've you know was doing a little bit of research on after i found this like realization is it just emphasizes the overall importance of exploration and exploration can take you know obviously just literally any form that you need it to um but it's it's basically like I think sometimes it, people who are trapped inside of the situation just need to explore more. Like they're worried that if they try something, they won't like it or that they will fail at it. And that's, that's, you know, the, the fear of the unknown yeah. manifesting, but saying yes to activities or putting yourself out there or even taking that thing that you know to be um, like, like scary for you and allowing that to sort of be like a step through a door that doesn't require cosmic fates you know shifting and turning and and morphing and and like whatever until the the moment of opportunity is seizable it's sort of like opening your eyes a little bit to like what happens when i do step out of that like that comfort zone and what does come next yeah and and so like you know we've been going on tour which i think is just like it's opened my eyes in a huge way to like different parts of the very country we already live in 
you know, different activities, just different like sights and sounds and, and, you know, like what it means to even like travel and what's out there, you know, it's like, these are all things that I think that like, while we've been on these trips, it's like, I'm just sort of being like, whoa, this is unbelievable. This is really cool. Right. Like, well, you're just sort of like existing in like your hometown doing your day to day job. It like doesn't occur to you that like, oh, there's this whole other like entire like world and experience out yes there. Yeah. yeah yeah so like you know i think we we talked after coming home from west coast about how we went and did like top golf right you know and <laughs> like i think you you sort of said in like one of the episodes a few weeks ago where it was like i like i like swung the club for the first time and like turned around like a different person yeah um and it's not like i've never been to like a driving range you know with our buddies before or whatever to like hit a bucket of balls for funsies yeah um but you know it's it's for whatever reason for for some reason the context of like that environment and the way the ball just sort of like left the tee and like soared off into the distance like you know it was kind of like whoa like it was like you know it really was fascinating it was like i really like i did enjoy that like that was a good feeling yeah um but like a lot of times like when you hear about golf and you see all the people who are fascinated with it and like all the time that they commit to it and like all this type of stuff it's like those those things all feel like you know now again the the being a hollywood actor type of problem it's like well these people have tons of resources at their disposal and they're playing all the time and they're still constantly you know seemingly struggling with getting better so it's like the the walls on walls on walls to approach this hobby it's like i'm probably just not oh, there know. yet right you know? I, like, I know what you mean like golf in particular can be like you know just getting a set of clubs can be you know expensive and then just be, you know even having them like golf is not intuitive in any sense of the word right you know like the way you're supposed to swing them and like how to like pick up the learning curve and it's like so if i want to do it like should i i I first got to get the clubs but then like should i take lessons and that'll be a certain kind of investment and right and then and then just going and playing a game is is right you know it's not inexpensive not either. always cheap yeah. yeah just like having a tea time and booking it like that's not inexpensive and then the the time investment like it might take three to four hours to play like an entire round of golf so there's like time away from your family and then there's like continuous investment in terms of like you know all the balls you're gonna lose while you're <laughs> playing and stuff like that and maybe you get lunch while you're there and it's like uh and then like you know oh if i may, maybe if I, i'll see if i get want to do it for a little bit and like you know you develop a bunch of like bad habits which are then difficult to unlearn if you get the lessons later so it's like do i how much do i need to front load my experience to begin with yes and it yes. just all feels like and then you go out there though and it's like you're right everyone always seems like they're struggling to get better but then if you go out there with people who have played a bunch it's like they're still definitely way better than you and you're like well i'm just dragging everybody down and it's like such a mental game and it's like there is it feels like a huge like barrier to entry such that like m- maybe i shouldn't even try right yeah, yeah like is it even worth going out there in in the first place and then so so that brings it back you know so like just to use the hollywood hollywood actor example it's like is it even worth trying because in the meantime it's like you do have something that works for you that's that's going well that you know like sustains our very existence like that's that's all you know like check 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 those are those things are all really good and it's like well if i all of a sudden start going and chasing this this massive ambition that could be very 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 difficult to potentially attain then it's like well is that is that going to be taking away my attention from what i'm supposed to be doing the thing that keeps like a roof over my head you know right. like that that like additional safety so like i can i can see like the the sort of like ebbs and flows of like you know why it might be so difficult to to go and chase these particular things especially if there's not like a super clear outline already in place as to like here's what it looks like and here's what you're going to do and here's what we're going to do to get there like yeah. that's that's where it's like you almost need to have like and, and there's no way to do this because who knows when they're like five you know but it's almost like if you could have like a life coach at age five to properly determine what life will be right yeah th- like oh you want to be that let's start doing these things and then you'll probably get there <laughs> right 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 Th- this is where it'd be like amazing or interesting if like the mirror of eris head was like a real thing oh right y- you know because then you could go and park yourself in front of you know this this magical mirror that shows you your heart's truest desire and it's like at age five it might be like oh you want to be a, a commercial pilot someday it's like perfect 
Like, it's like, you may not have been able to articulate that, but there was that one time that we took a flight down to Disney World and you really thought the guy in the hat was so cool. Right. And all the and controllers. want to do. Yeah. Like, it just, it like, it, it ingrained into you and you couldn't have articulated it, but we can see. And now we will figure out how to get you there. Yeah. 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 And I think, like, probably, like, for a lot of professions, it's like, if you want to do it, it's a matter of, like, getting the education and the practice and then you can probably do it. True. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That, I think that that's, that's a, that's a very good point. But part of that as well um is is like the discovery you know in and i mean it's not to say you could never just go back to school like i mean that's that's also always on the table if like you need to go and like achieve additional education to like find the next path forward yeah you know but education is obviously just like everything else quite expensive um and so i think it's it's figuring it out prior to going and finding yourself in university without without that that plan yeah you know in place beforehand um so anyway i think i think like when i reflect back on it like there's a big piece of me that's almost like it would be really cool uh you know to if, if i were to go back and talk to somebody who's who's in this phase of life like my advice would basically be go and start like exploring or going and asking if you can like shadow somebody at their job for like an hour you know yeah like go and get a glimpse into a bunch of different things to get some version of like what what clicks with you, what jives with you, right? What's what's going to be the, the what's going to be the thing, the proper fit? Because I think all of those things might be like, well, can I figure out if I want to be an engineer by going and sitting down with like you know my dad's friend for one hour? And it's like, who knows? Like, worth the hour though, right? Probably, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> um. So anyway, that was I, I. It was just on my mind all weekend. I don't know why. And then it kind of seemed like all these different conversations all seemed to be like kind of threading together um and and me and Allie had a, a little bit of like a major life decision thing pop up over the weekend about like uh basically like a like a financial thing that we could try and do and you know we were you know basically sitting there and like weighing the pros and cons and and attempting to figure out like you know what we truly want next for our life and for our family and it was like that was when i finally like punched into google the exact question of just like it's like i literally typed into google it is hard for me to know what i want when i don't know what's possible um and i was just so like like that that is me that is that sentence is is like all encompassing uh, like to my life experience i know exactly what you mean though like um i feel like i feel like this way about travel a lot of times yeah i'm like you know people be like oh if you could go anywhere in the world where would you go and i'm like i don't know you know it's like i don't know what it's like one of those i don't know what i don't know sort you, of things you don't know what you don't know and then there's also like like the the battle that i always find myself with with travel is like you do know what you do know so right. it's like like you know we we like going to disney world for right. example so it's like it's like i like I know we're going in January. I know all the things I'm already looking forward to doing. Like I right. can't wait to see. I'm good at going to Disney World. <laughs> yes, like yeah. it's like I've I figured out how to optimize this particular experience. Right. Um. However, I I also think there's a part of me in the back of my mind that as much as I like you know I got married there, we're you know like Disney Vacation Club members. We've been you know like we're we're very ingrained into like the Disney thing. But like there's also a part of me that is like hesitant to like allow that to define all of me you know yeah. like like and, and which is not to say that there's anything wrong with the people who who are like you know like the, the 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 disney adult and like this is like you know every aspect of of you know like our annual travel revolves around you know this thing it's like yeah. I, I do still want to go and see other things but on the same token oftentimes it's like well i love traveling to vermont a place i've been nearly every year of my life yep um i love going to you know the the family beach that we go to yep. um you know because it's like you know if it, these are things other than disney that i know i love to do because i also know what i can look forward to about them right but then there's then there's you know like going to germany yeah. It's like, I love the idea of going to Germany. I have no idea what I'm going to do there. Right. Well, you know? yeah. What, what am I doing in Germany? Right. Yeah, like, which, which town and which activity and like where to start and what's it like? And I know. Yes. Like um, when we went to, I'm trying to think of like, um, like last year when I went then even, okay, let me back up for a sec. Yeah. Sometimes you'll go to a place for a specific like event and then it's like, 
you know, you, you go there and it's like, did I even really go to Germany or did I, did I go to like the conference center? Yes. You know what I mean? That, that is a, that is a major thing. Yes. Right. Yeah. So like, like I've technically been to Denver convention center for an aquarium conference right. that I've also seen in Florida and Boise, Idaho. Yeah. Like, you know, and it's the same effective hall <laughs> yeah i know so it's like i've been to like last year i went to a pittsburgh for like that pokemon tournament yes and it was like you know i went to pittsburgh and you know we went out you know but most most of the time was spent at the convention hall like playing the game so i've seen the inside of that hall for quite a good time right and like i have memories from that trip that are really fun and like but like did we go and do things in the city like uh, we got like a steak dinner and we got some sandwiches right you know it's like those were cool it's like did i do pittsburgh you know do i am i am i like oh i love pittsburgh you know right or right like, oh, i went to two i had two meals there you know <laughs> yes i i know I, I know what you mean yeah because that's that's similar to i mean yeah kind of like the tour experience a little bit as well where you know we we were in portland for like 30 hours right um you know so there, there was not a lot of time to truly be like is is portland like where i want to be i know, you know? like we like we went to the rose garden the rose garden was fun and then we just had like lunch at a brewery and then we kind of went to the venue and then we woke up in the morning and left yes right yeah it was like i enjoyed all three of those things but do, do i feel like i know what it's like to be in portland like not really <laughs> right yeah right uh yeah so that's that's that is the other the other big challenge as well like this this was something i feel like growing up our parents you know seemed to do a really nice job about though was they oftentimes would use like a running event as like a reason to go and be somewhere yeah like they'd be like yeah we're training for the you know the dublin to ireland marathon and you know so sure enough they would spend months and months and months preparing and getting ready to go and run a marathon in dublin but then they would also be there for like five more days where they would go and like explore and do the rest of the things and yeah you know take in take in ireland yeah. uh for the first time and um so it's like some sometimes i feel like that's almost like too coded into my brain like this is how you do it like it's almost like yes like if nothing else if you could say like yes we did the dublin ireland marathon it's like okay that's that's a fun big like okay trip worth it just because of that but like if if i were to or like going to pittsburgh for like the pokemon tournament for yeah. example it's like it's like you know that is enough but like if you went and you just sort of like booked a hotel in pittsburgh and you went and got a sandwich and a steak dinner and like didn't really properly explore anything else it's almost like answering that question like if you take away the marquee event the reason why you're there in the first place i don't know what to fill in the rest of the gaps oh i know with i know and then like sometimes i get like really in my own way about like the authenticity of my experience sure like do you know like you know um i love going to new york city for example yeah like, it's super fun every time we're there i have a blast but like when i'm in new york city i'm not like someone who lives in new york city you know like i'll go to the bagel place that people that you know it says on google is like you got to go to this bagel place right and we walk around like the Times square area a lot and we hit like big tourist things and it's like you know i go to a broadway show and it's like those are all really fun things that are typically only available in this spot and it's part of why i like going there but like you know, like it's, it's definitely not the same as if you just lived in New York city. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, like, you're, you did all the tourist things. I did all the tourist things. And then I'm like, so do I even really know what it's like to live in New York city? You know? And it's like, of course I don't, but then it's like, but like who cares? Cause you went there and you had fun. Right. Like what difference does it make? You know, like why, why let that get in the way of like, going there at all sometimes i think that's like sometimes i get like like yeah i could like we could we could go to like ireland or whatever but then we you know what would i do what would i do like would like you know i'd, I'd probably go to like this tourist thing and i'd go to like check out this tourist thing and then i'd come back and I'd be like we had a great time in ireland but it's like you know did did i experience what it was like to live in ireland or did i just see some famous things that are there and well, it's like i i don't know there's obviously no way to be like yeah, no, we went and lived in Ireland for a year 
And that's why I really like it because I found this bagel shop I really loved. And we went there every morning and there was this place, this bar. We'd always get this the stew. You'd have to walk in and be like, what's in the pot today? You know, right, you know? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll take what's in the pot. We'll take what's in the pot, yeah. And a hot beer. And a hot beer. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, no, I know. I know what you mean too, because like you know, I could, I could, ex- I could compare experiences. Like, uh, I think, I think um earlier this summer i told a story about like there was just like a day that we were like uh at this like lake house that we rented you know like 45 minutes from our house and you know i was just going and doing like you know flips and and gainers and stuff like that like (laughs) off the dock just sort of like having like a whimsy couple of hours while like addison was like down for a nap and like if you were to ask me inside of that moment like my fun meter would have been at like an 11 out of 10 right it was like i was having so much fun And then like if I could compare that, though, for example, to like traveling to Paris and going to like the Louvre, it's like the Louvre is this like famous international landmark. It's like the pyramid and like the heart of Paris. And it's got like the Mona Lisa hanging inside of it. And it's like such an opportunity to like get to go and and see it for real with your own eyes. Right. But like and like it's a fun thing to just be able to say that like i did but like punch for punch pound for pound i was having way more fun goofing off on that dock 45 minutes from my house right then i was looking at this art that like i'm sure is absolutely amazing and someone who like appreciates art more can properly understand but like i like i just don't have that education so it's like i'm not here to like say that it was like a negative experience or that I wouldn't absolutely recommend going to the Louvre. It's just like when it really boils down to it, it's like I had just as much fun just doing my, my flips off of the dock right there. Right. You know, it's like, you know, it, it, but, but like that feels like a, like one, like I've literally have seen like the most famous painting on the planet. Right. You know, like that, that feels like it should count for something. But like when I was looking at it, like I didn't really feel anything right like specific you know it was just it was just cool to say i did it right um and so i think sometimes like that's the that's the battle i'm i'm torn between where it's like you you get there and you're like looking at the thing and you're like i know that this is important but like i'm not interacting with it i'm just looking at it right like you know and i don't know i don't exactly know what i'm supposed to take away from that experience other than just the the like the photo <laughs> right. <laughs> the, right the mo the photo the mona lisa photo the, yeah the photo of the mona lisa the most googleable image on, uh, on the face yeah yeah i know what you mean it's like do you you know if it is is going to the louvre fun because you love art or because you're going to the louvre exactly, exactly. yeah 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 and it's like i mean if you love art it probably is more fun and if you're an artist and you were on display there you'd be like this is basically the coolest thing that's ever happened to me the the it's pinnacle the of pinnacle yeah, yeah yeah although pardon me if i was like i bet there's artists who's like the louvre so pedestrian so <laughs> you know so mainstream <laughs> what, one way or another someone has said that someone has said yeah. that someone i don't know has, if everyone would say uh, yeah. that yeah, but yeah. someone I'm has sure, i'm sure someone's been like the louvre is too mainstream for my kind of art they don't understand i wouldn't even put it in there if they ask me you know <laughs> and that, good good for you <laughs> good for you hey you sound fun at parties <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> so i don't know um so th- did you come to any conclusions about what um you w- want to achieve in the next five years or anything like that or like did any new capabilities arise in your brain as a result of this conversation with Alice? Well, I, I think, I think the big thing that I took away from it was, was understanding like maybe like a, like a larger, like a bigger piece of myself, because like, I do think sometimes like when doors are open, like when opportunity presents itself, I'm not timid to go to, to go running through it. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes like the, you have to take some solace in the fact that like, you know, doors don't open every day and it's like you you need to be aware that like you have a good tracker track record of going through it when it does even if you don't know what those doors are ultimately going to be so it's like it's kind of like i I don't necessarily know that i can answer the question firmly but i can take confidence in the fact that in the next five years i will i will um open and enter more doors than i have so far okay um and so it's like i know that's not like a it's not a very concrete answer it's not a very fun answer um but i think like it was it was kind of interesting to like articulate 
this this sentiment, this thing that I struggle with. Because in 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 large part, I think because other people do as well. And and it's like when we get those questions, like I, I talked about earlier, like in the Q and A, it was like it was like person, I understand you. Like the you are me. Like the question you just asked is exactly how I feel. And it's like, whenever I get those questions, I'm always so eager to answer them because I think that there's this part of me that's kind of like, like, you know, you asked the question that stood off the page to me because I was there. And part of me thinks that because I was there, I'm going to be good at answering the question. Right. And the problem was, is that I don't think I learned the answer. Right. <laughs> so like, you know, when people ask and I'm like, Oh yes, this person gets it. Well, or they, or they don't get it in the same way that I didn't get it. Right. Um, and I'm like, yeah, I want I want to spotlight that. I want to, I want to help. I want to do something. And I'm like, wait, no, I didn't figure it out either. <laughs> well, the funny th- it's like so funny. Cause the, I like, you know, like when we started doing YouTube or whatever, like I'm sure there's plenty of people who would think like, oh, it was it's not even worth trying. Like it's so difficult to get anyone to watch or care about what you have to say yeah, or whatever. But like, you know, and like I can totally understand that. And it would have been a perfectly reasonable reaction to what we were doing at the time. Right. Um, but like to me, that never felt like a reason not to do it. You know, it always it always felt like it was a worthwhile endeavor to me. Yeah. Well, you know? and and um, so I think I think like if you want to use YouTube as a really good example, I think for this particular conversation, I would say that that was an instance in life where it was like you did have that like, you know, again, like to go to like the Hollywood actor, like ambition, like the like, you know, that possible outcome. And, and you were going and chasing it and in some ways i'm i I think you've even said this before yourself like you would be at your day job thinking about like script ideas for like for youtube oh absolutely i would yeah it was like uh it was a, a huge focus of mine but at the same time it wasn't like this obvious like roadmap for how to do it and if someone had like asked me when i was like you know to 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 I don't know, like in high school, certainly I couldn't have even said like, oh, yeah, I want to be like a like a a, a YouTuber because it didn't really like exist at all then. Right. And like, you know, it wasn't like even even in the moment, it was like hard to be like, oh, what are you you know, what are you trying to do? And it'd be like, I'm trying to become a YouTuber. You know, like, even that didn't even feel like a like at, at no point did I feel like I had firm control over like if I do it, it will work. Sure. You know, it yeah. wasn't like, oh, yeah, you know what? Like I, I have a job right now, but I'm going to school to become like a pilot or something, Uh huh. you know, where it was like, yeah, I, I'm doing this, but I know I'm on like a very standard trajectory to getting to where I want. It never felt like, oh, I absolutely like I didn't know what I wanted to do, but it didn't feel I never like knew for sure if I could do it right or if it was like worth trying to do, but it didn't feel like it was, um, I guess all I'm trying to say is that like, I never, I never felt like I had the answer. It was just something I really wanted to do. (laughs) Right. Right. But, and, and I think the reason I think it's a good example is because I think that is one where like on the flip side for me, it was like, even while we were doing it, the outcome that we have now was actively not what I wanted. Yeah. Um, you know, like, and, and so I think for me, like at some point that was almost where like, I had to like wait for the door to open. And, and this was an instance where like, I think I even walked with hesitation through the door right you know it was kind of like i i like had to be like like okay okay like you know because and and i think on some level that was maybe like a moment in my life where it was like like did i go through the first door that did open for me or like would there be more doors down the line am i just going through you know like this one because it's here like i think that was like a greater degree of like contemplation at, at specific phases of it where obviously as time has gone on, things have changed rather drastically and it's, it's yeah. become like an incredibly like fulfilling career. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think that that was something like where, um, like I think, I think you could have had the, the, like the bullseye thrown out in the distance, not knowing if it was like possible, but still sort of like eyes on the prize a little bit like it was still out there whereas i think like i was more like staring at like the ground in front of me just sort of like looking to take the next step forward right you know yeah um well and i mean even even the bullseye i was looking at i don't think you know 
uh, is the shape of what it is, is the now. shape of what it is now yeah like not at all like to me like i had my day job and i was like if i could get to a point where i just did youtube and didn't have to go to the office like i would take it like i would even take like a significant like pay cut right you know, right for the option to to do this and be able to spend more time on it or whatever um and then that never ended up having to be the case and right it worked out you know um really well but it's like i but you're right like i didn't even know what i was aiming for you know like what i was aiming for was like such like small potatoes versus like what was like even like possible because what like like the like it it never ever ever occurred to me that when we were like starting youtube that like we would have like uh, an office or uh like employees or right. something like that you know even even after you know we both went full time the idea of having like a different office seemed like foreign to me and it was like i just don't know like like do we really need that you know like we're it's working now right 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 um, obviously it was the correct call <laughs> right kind right. of thing and you know now we've been in like several different places and stuff but it's like it's funny the way things that like you know you don't think are possible are needed end up can, can end up working out really well yes yes and and that's that's another one too i think where it's like it's almost like a um it can it can be a little bit strange and, and this might be like the foil to like the people who always thought they knew what they wanted to do only to discover when they got there it was like this is not what i thought it was going to be it's, it's right. a little bit of like that like meeting your heroes uh type of thing like sometimes you have this like version of them in your head based on like the the characters they portray or like the tone of their music or whatever but like you, you never know what they're like if you were to just run into them on the street right you know a completely completely different experience or something or or that peak peak behind the curtain and so that was that was sometimes i feel like what would happen for me um with potential career opportunities like where i always really liked walking into like science class for example and seeing like all the all the beakers and the the bunsen burners and like you know like whenever they would show like you know dexter's laboratory and you know he would have like all the the little spinny coily glass work yeah. and stuff like that like in my mind, it was like if I could show up every day and be running experiments on like uh, with like different colored liquids and tubes and and bubbling. What and, more and, could I want? Yeah, exactly. It's like that's what I want. And then it felt like it felt like that was like one of those things where it was like the more I learned about like what science actually is, it's like a lot of time reading and researching and writing and um you know yeah. like it's not nearly always like that's that's almost like the the grand finale. Um. Or similar, like, you know, like if you want, if you see like a rocket ship take off or whatever, it's like, it's this huge momentous occasion because, you know, tens, if not hundreds of thousands of man hours went into that singular 10 right. second moment. Right. To you like, know, we're all working really, 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 really hard. So that when we push this button on this day at this time, that happens and nothing goes wrong. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And, and so like, you know, I think, I think that's where, you know, like you, like I said, you know, go and go and spend an hour at your, your dad's friend's work to see if you like the job or whatever, because like probably what you're going to see is not a rocket launch everybody like a rocket launch is a spectacle because it's fun it's cool like it is objectively awesome yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> right. like there is there's no nobody sees a rocket launch and like yawns yeah um because it's just it's a it is like the 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 peak of human engineering happening before your very eyes right however human engineering is not rocket launches every single day it certainly isn't and i think like it's so funny how I feel like this applies in like such large scale things about like, what do you want to do with like your whole career, but it can also apply to just like your day to day life. Like I remember like, like when I planted like the garden the first time I was like, I'm positive I've done this wrong. Like I'm not really, you know, no one's really told me how to do it and I'm not really capable of making this happen. Even though it's like, if you, if you put like, plants want to grow you know? yeah like, yeah if you put seeds in the ground and water them they're going to do their thing right but it was like I, I you know all i did was like i just i tore up some earth and i put some seeds in the ground and i'm like i'm positive i've done it wrong like i don't i don't i'm not qualified to do this like i don't know what i'm doing and it's like then stuff grows and you're like well, this probably isn't going to work out and then it, it you know it it just it happens right and it's like oh i didn't know i was like i didn't know i was capable of doing that but now it's here 
Now it's yeah. here. We yeah. did it. I know. Yeah. We did it. It's happening. Right. Stuff. Food. Food. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And and that's true. That's true. Like, and, and that's probably, um, that's probably so true. You're right. Like in, in so many different avenues in life. Like, uh, I know the, the big barrier I've had right now is like, I, I, over a year ago now I bought a guitar and I was like, I'll go and I'll take lessons and I will learn how to play music and i am so convinced that that will not happen right it's like it's like no i'm not i've never been musically inclined like i like i will show up to lessons and like the strings will break or like you know the 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 pick won't work or the sound won't be right or something or like your brain can't memorize 15 notes in a row to make something right. like desirable come out of it right like you, the, you, it's it all you know I, I know what you mean it feels like like i know people play the guitar and i could have someone show me how to do it but like would i be capable of memorizing those things would i be able to reproduce them would i be able to look at the music and understand it and it feels like oh, no no why would i be able to do that right you right know? yeah like yeah. E- even the people that you go and you see like at like a brewery on like a friday night who's just sitting there doing like a one-man acoustic set or whatever it's like like in my mind i'm like this is somebody who got like a guitar for their third birthday. This is somebody who like everybody who knew them growing up always had an affinity for this. This is the person who had like the, the CD folder when we were kids with like 8,000 CDs in it because like they, they just couldn't get enough music. Like, yeah, it's like, I didn't put in all that legwork that they did. So it's like, yeah, they're, they're sitting here playing to like 13 people who are mostly just talking with their friends and drinking their beers. Right. But like, but still like they're at an unattainable level of, of craftsmanship that yeah. like I haven't spent my whole life working towards. Yes. Yes. I know what you mean. I, I remember when I was at the, at the concert venue, Nice. Um, yeah. like there was this uh, woman who started popping up on Facebook and she was just taking these like crazy pictures of the city of Roanoke. I remember this. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, like she would just post them online and uh, they, they would pop up and I'd be like, this is like so cool. Like I, I can't, I can't even remember how to describe them, but I remember reaching out to her and being like, you know, would you want to take some pictures of the venue? Cause you know, um, our GM wanted some like updated, uh, pictures and stuff. And I was like, well, this person clearly do- doing a good job. I, I remember there was like one photo taken from like the Roanoke star and there was like a huge cloud overhead and you could see like the rain in like one concentrated like column where like the other half of like the photo was like sunlight. Yeah. And it was like, whoa yeah that is so cool really cool and i remember like i was you know uh th- you know she was like yeah absolutely i'll come in and she just like walked in and like th- no one has ever looked like less like a photographer you know like she was definitely she's like yeah i've been taking pictures for like a month or something and it was like a month <laughs> like what <laughs> you're taking such good photos i know she's kind of just like holding your camera and she's got her bag and it, she was like yeah i was just sort of like i just checked like a book out of the library and i found a, you know i kind of just did what it said i found a cool spot and i followed the instructions and you know right, <laughs> it was, right. It was just like well i i it was such like i'm so glad i met that person because it was just like a testament to just like you know some people are out there training and doing all this stuff and other people are just like figuring it out on their own out of a book and getting amazing results yes and it's like you don't it feels like there has to be this like magical crazy laid out process for how you're going to do something but there doesn't right you know like that you can achieve things in different ways yes uh well and and was even with like on that exact example i had an, an interesting one of my early days of of doing like the aquarium stuff where i had this like couple come in and like they you know they were both um, you know, like professionals and so they had like, you know, like a good, a good budget available to do like aquarium related things, but they were like always so curious and they asked like tons of questions and they were all like super, super into it. And I remember somewhere along the way they needed to go on like a trip for vacation. And so they were like, Hey, like, would you mind coming and just doing like a service visit for us? Like while we're gone. Cause like, you know, we just, we don't, we don't trust anybody else. And like, you know, you, we just like followed all of like, you know, like whatever, like the, the protocols and everything. We just want to make sure that it's like done right. And I showed up and of course, you know, like their, their aquarium is at their house. So I see them all the time. I never see their tank. And I walked in and I was like, this is the most incredible tank I've ever seen. Right. I was like, I was like, what are you guys doing? And they were like, what you told us to do. And it was like one of those things where I was like, my advice doesn't yield this. Right. Like, <laughs> you my know? Tank, my, even my own tank doesn't look like this. Yeah. I mean, I mean, correct right like it didn't you know and i was like i was like what 
No, like, it, I mean, it was like one of those things where, I mean, it, it was clearly a prime example of like, do as I say, not as I do, which is like, I know you can skip a water change every once and again, you'll be fine. Yeah. And they were like, you said weekly water changes forever. And so that's what we've done without fail every single time. And it's like, yeah, it's working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, turns out. Yeah. Turns out. I know, like not to bring everything back to plants. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, hey, whatever. you know what? Why not? You know, why not? I, we, I remember like, you know, during co- during covid obviously we got we got like a host of indoor plants yes that were a part of our thing and i remember like every morning and i got like one of those little sprayer things that you would just you know go through and, and spray them with and it was like a very like um like almost a relaxing thing to do but it's like as soon as you get it you kind of like just follow the instructions and it's like water this thing this much water this thing this much water this thing this much and i would just do it every day and I would go through it, and sure enough, it's like, yeah, all these plants are like thriving. And they, you're like, they well, did it. I know. And you're like, well, geez, I wonder what I'm like. I'm surprised these are doing so well. Like, all I'm doing is everything it said. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I feel like I must be doing it wrong, though. Like, certainly I'm not getting it right. All you know? I did was follow the instructions perfectly. I know. <laughs> this is a problem here. Uh, like, like, why are you succeeding so well? Right. Yeah. Um, so that, it, I don't know. And now it's like, I, I don't do that aspect um as much anymore with all those plants and what why are we so convinced that following the instructions won't work i don't know it always feels like you gotta have your own twist you gotta like think better than the instructions like 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 someone put the instructions on here because they like were legally forced to but they're not really that great instructions or something well yeah i mean this this is like one of those things where it's it is like um like the secret ingredient concept you know or like the the million dollar idea like these are these like ever elusive terms or like you know things that have come up all throughout forever where it's like oh yeah like you know mama so-and-so has the best red sauce in town because she's got that secret ingredient nobody can crack or kfc's seven herbs and spices or you know like somebody came up with the scrub daddy and it's like it just is a better sponge you know but like that's catching lightning in a bottle that's like successfully stumbling across like an outcome that just happened to work in a way that nobody ever could have fathomed and like nobody else can actually like achieve those results um you know meanwhile like i feel like one of like the best recipes that i can consistently make is a white chicken chili that like our mom got from somebody at like a community potluck and it's sort of like people are always like raving about it and it's like yeah i just followed the instructions based on like you know <laughs> right yeah you know i, did, I didn't make this chili up <laughs> uh, yeah like I, I i can't take any credit for the excellent execution here i just followed the instructions on it and it's like yeah because like if you pull any recipe and follow the instructions and make the outcome it's like that is what most achieving everything is doing yeah right you know i know it's like why am i surprised it's like you know if you were like I think um I remember I think it was the the book the seven habits of highly effective people or something. Right. Um once upon a time where he was like one of the lessons he's talking about in the book is like you know he gave his son the task of keeping their lawn like clean and green or whatever. Right. You know and it was like you know at first he just didn't really know how to do it or anything but then it's like yeah I just like ran the sprinkler every day and picked up the trash and it was like yep and the lawn looked amazing. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> yeah yeah that's it's like why how does your lawn look so good it's like well i just run the sprinkler so i watered it i watered it yeah sort of the secret sauce it's like you know is there are there it feels like there should be like these complicated things you have to do and it's like often that is not the case right yes yes Um, or or it's like or even if it is complicated it's like there are instructions or whatever this is like i I think i talked about this last week like like building stuff like i wish i just had all the tools and like i was like i want i want a thing that i want to build and then to like try and do it because i feel like it would be so satisfying and i feel like but if i did i feel like the whole time i'd be like yeah like i just like threw it together like it's not as good as it could be or anything sure but sure that like why not why is like if it's doing what you wanted it to do why isn't that satisfactory <laughs> well i mean there's there's no doubt about it i mean this is like uh it, it, the craftsman can always spot their all of their mistakes yeah. in a way that you will never do when somebody else does it for you mm-hmm. um and and it's like I, I this happens all the time like when i bake like the macarons where like i'm you know making a successful one is having like the foot lift off in such a way that like the foot exists only be- beneath like the dome cap of the macaron right but like 
if like it flares out in any direction at all, it's sort of like, oh, shoot, I, I screwed up the foot. It doesn't affect the flavor of it at all. It just makes it look slightly less perfect, like it came out of like a patisserie or something. Right. Um, but, you know, it's the type of thing that I always spot when I mess it up and everybody else is like, Ben, you're being way too critical on yourself. And it's like, no, I, I, I just, you know, like, I just wanted to be exactly right. Right. <laughs> you I know, to be exactly right. And clearly I'm a failure. So just let, just, just, you know, agree let, with me that I failed. Let me fail in peace. Uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Stop telling me how good I am when I know I'm the worst. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's clear. We all get it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think this happens like, yeah, like whenever I build anything, it's always like, I can like see like, you know, the, the one screw that stripped its head or like, you know, it's like, ah, oh, it's ever so slightly crooked or like, you know, there's a, there's an extra millimeter gap in between like this spot and that spot that like, you know, like I probably could have done better if I had just gone slower or right, you know, right, right. measured three more times or something. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll work on it though. We'll, yeah. we'll find a good build. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That seems cool. like fun. What I really, the, here's what we need to do is the fence. That's what we have to do. Okay. Okay. Cool. Bam. We'll do a fence. We'll do a fence. All right. It's going right. to be great. I'm in. All I'm right. in. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much as always for tuning into this week's episode of the pop. If you want exclusive access to vinyl recording of J and I's own two voices, yes. then you can receive that by heading on over to Patreon dot com slash popcorn culture and signing up for the quarterly merch tier uh, because we are once again making an exclusive episode of popcorn culture that will be available only on vinyl it is going to be just so much fun uh, as was the the previous edition of of this exact concept and the good news is is that uh, near as we are aware uh, Adele the musician has not purchased one million copies of, of vinyl recordings yeah. of her latest album which is what caused it to be so very delayed last time so the good news is is that lead times are not extraordinary and we should have it out in in a normal yes, turnaround in record time <laughs> 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 nailed it so if you want to check it out again patreon.com slash popcorn culture it is in the link in the description down below and all the other places where you could possibly imagine or you can just go type it into the url bar and you know hit enter and it'll show up and you'll be like hey cool this is so easy yeah um so be sure to check that out but otherwise until next time pop pop Today's episode was edited by Isabel Chrisley. Vaishan Brandon does our art. Catherine Stein is our production manager, and the show is hosted by me and Jonathan Carlin.